As we look ahead to the next year, we are also looking ahead to some new faces preparing for new positions come January. Dr. Sarah Tishkoff, ASHG's president-elect, is joining us now in studio to discuss her plans for the upcoming year. Such a pleasure. Well, thank you. It's a pleasure to meet you, and I am so excited to be president uh, starting in January of the Society. Congratulations as you assume the role of president of ASHG and take the helm. What are some key priorities that you would like to focus on? I have a number of key priorities. So the first is that I want to make sure that the society is welcoming and inclusive of all people, regardless of their background, their geographic origin, uh, or their abilities. I also want to make sure that we're living up to the vision that people everywhere benefit from human genetics and genomics research. And in fact, I think it's really important that we increase diversity um, in human genetics and genomics research. What do you think some of the biggest obstacles or challenges are right now that the genetics community face? Is, in, is, is advocacy one of them? There are amazing opportunities. The technology has developed so rapidly that now we can sequence entire genomes, hundreds of genomes, in just days. But along with that comes some challenges. So one is to make sure that we're including diversity. As I said, that's really important. And the other is that we now have these massive data sets where we have very large, very complex data sets. We have to be developing novel computational methods, uh, using AI to be able to analyze these large and complex data sets. And then lastly, we have to be uh, developing and applying functional genomics approaches so that we can actually characterize what is this variation doing, what is it doing, and how is it impacting both health and disease. I want to talk about you for a minute. You hold a number of positions within ASHG over your um, amazing career. Any one in particular that you think has most helped you or prepared you to assume the role of president? <laughs> No, because I can't pick just one. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I'll just briefly just highlight some of them. As co-chair of the Professional Practice and Social Implications Committee, um, we had to identify and come up with guidance for a lot of the pressing issues that, particularly ethical issues, that arise in the field of human genetics and genomics. I had the honor of being on the board of directors, um, and at that time, I would say what my biggest achievement, what I felt most proud of, was playing a role in um, devising the strategic plan, oh, right. or mm -hmm. the strategic vision, mm -hmm. that we are still largely um, using today. We've had a really great week here in Denver, so much incredible science. Anything in particular that stands out to you as a real highlight? I can't pick just one. There have been a number of great presentations, but I particularly particularly like the opening plenary abstract session, mm -hmm. but to be perfectly honest, one of my favorite parts of this meeting is the poster sessions, because that's where you get to actually talk to people one-on-one. -on -one. My biggest challenge there is I can never make it past like one to three rows. Right, right, <laughs> because so I'm much. Exactly, and I'm just stopping to, to talk mm -hmm. with people, so I always look forward to that. Well, we look forward to your next year, and thank you so much for making time to talk with us today. Best of luck. Thank you. My pleasure.